Good morning, Grade 6 learners. Good to be with you again after a long break. Um, good to be teaching you all again. I trust that you're all staying safe during lockdown. I know it's not fun, but as long as you are staying safe. And um, today we're going to be um, talking about matter. It's Unit 6 in your um, textbooks. And it is basically a recap of what we learned last year. So in this lesson, I'm basically just going to be going over what you should already know. So um, what do we know about matter? Well, we know that matter um, is found in three states. So the first state is the gas state. Hello. So matter can be a gas. Matter is also found in the liquid state. Mm. Liquid. Matter can also be found in the solid state. So matter is gas, liquid and solids. And in each of these states of matter, um, the particles are arranged differently. So we know that matter is made up of particles. Metal is made out of metal particles. Plastic is made out of um, plastic particles. Water is made out of water molecules. So they are all made out of particles. But in each state, the particles are arranged differently. So in solids, the particles are arranged very, very, very close together. So if we look at the dots um, in the circle, we will see that they are very, very close together. That's why solids keep their shape, because the particles are very, very tightly close together. So let's put solids over there. With liquids, if I look at that um, circle over there, we will see that they are also quite close together, but there are little gaps which allow the particles to move around. And so liquid is able to flow because the particles are able to move around. Let's put that over there. Then when we come to gases, we see that the particles are very, very um, widely spaced away from each other. It's like the coronavirus and the social distancing. Hey, gases like the space, they are very um, far apart. So the particles are very, very far apart. So, with solids, we see that the, in solids, the particles are very closely packed in a regular pattern. And we're going to put that over there. We're going to go to the liquids. And we will see then that in liquids, there are small gaps um, which allow um, the particles to move around each other and so we see the movement in um, liquids. So we said that in gases um, the particles are far apart from each other. Let's put that there. And not only are they far apart from each other but they are free to move in all directions as well. So in gases, the particles are far apart. They are also free to move in all directions. So there we have our particles of gases, liquids and solids. Then the way that um, the particles are arranged affect the properties of those materials. So we see differences, different properties in gases, liquids and solids. So we're going to look at what are some of the properties of gases, liquids 
and solid. So with um, solid materials, because the particles are so um, close together, we said that they keep their shape. So solids keep their shape. Let's put that over there. And um, solids are also very malleable. We learned that um, word last year, which means that we are able to mold it. So they are malleable. So we can mold plastic into different shapes like forks. We can um, mold metal into different shapes like spoons keys and lots of different shapes as well. Glass is also malleable. Look at the nice um, glass that was um, molded out of glass. Then metal can, well not metal but um, solids can be quite hard. So, metal is one solid that is very hard. So, if I put it there and I put it, it is very hard. Wood is also very hard. Plastic is also very hard. Oh. But that's not hard. What do we call that? We say it is brittle. So something that breaks quite easily is brittle. Wood can also be quite brittle. It can break it quite easily. So wood is brittle. Then some solids can also be quite soft like erasers. Erasers are very soft. Put that there. So those are the, um, some of the properties of our solids. So now we're going to go and say, well, what are some of the properties of liquids? So what we do know about liquids is we know that liquids flow because the particles are not so tight together they are able to move and so liquid can flow. So we say liquid can flow. Let's put that over there. And not only does liquid flow, but liquid also takes the shape of its container. So if we look at this funny looking container here, we see it is quite an odd shape, but the liquid has taken on the shape of the container. So there we go, liquids take on the shape of the container. Let's put that over there. Then what do we know about gases? Well, we know that although gases are all around us, like oxygen, there are different types of gases, but gases can be contained. So we can contain gases. So over here we have contained oxygen inside the balloon. There is gas inside the cup. Although it looks empty, it is filled with gas. And that brings us to our next point, And that is that gas will always completely fill a container. There will be no, no open spaces with gases. Because when they get into a container, remember they spread out. Come guys, let's spread out. Let's fill this thing. And so gases completely fill a container. So that is all that we are doing um, today on the matter and states of matter. I hope that um, it has refreshed your memory. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at 
the change of state and how um, things can change from solids to gases and to liquids. So um, see you tomorrow.